in the other ones. Today's video is on how having Ellis Danlos syndrome affects me socially. Okay, so how does it affect me with my family, with my friends, um, and also a little bit I'll touch on about how it affects my own self image and self worth. Now, Ellis Danlos syndrome, as we have discovered from previous videos, affects all areas of our life. It can cause me physical pain, it affects my digestive system, my brain, my heart, my lungs, all the rest of it, you name it. Okay, now socially, my life is very, very unpredictable. Um, as I've spoken about having to use my irrigation bag, sometimes that doesn't work. And so I find it very, very hard to stick to plans. Now, all of my friends and family are really supportive of this. Everyone knows, you know, that sometimes I have to let people down and the majority of people don't judge me for it. However, it is really, really hard because sometimes you can't really like change plans last minute. You know, if you've booked a table somewhere and been, I'm like, you know, I, I can't come, that can be really hard, both for me and for the people or the person who I'm going to meet. Number two, it can make it really difficult to make friends. The, obviously when you get to sort of our age, the place where we make friends are normally like clubs, pubs, you know, sort of hobby groups, that sort of thing. And again, not being able to have that sort of commitment makes it very difficult for me to mix with people. Um, people often think that I'm unreliable and the fact that, you know, I'm letting people down. And that is really hard because that's not the case at all. I usually will be sat at home crying because I want to be doing these things and I just can't. Um, however, you do have to make your life adapt round to what you can do. So, you know, I absolutely love running and I've got some really fantastic running friends, but I'm just really open and upfront when I'm having a bad day and I'll say, look, happy to run, but let's run somewhere near my house so that if I need the toilet or something, or if I, I need to stop for some reason, I'm nearby and it's not too much of a problem. Okay, next, relationships. Now, relationships. This is a subject that can be difficult to talk about, especially when you are a year out of being married and then having your heart broken. However, life does move on, but, Having a condition such as Ellis Danlos syndrome can put enormous stress on relationships, which I'm very aware it did in my previous relationship. It can put stress on the fact that, you know, at a drop of a hat, I might have to end up in hospital, all the hospital appointments, all of the symptoms, all of the things that it affects me on a daily basis. You know, I try not to, but sometimes a girl's got to moan about these things. And that can be a really hard thing for your partner to have to put up with. I think also socially it's hard for them because they have to try and adapt not just to their lives but also to, to my life. You know, I have to do things slightly differently. I can't eat normal food like normal people. I can't go on these, you know, adventures that perhaps um, relationships might want to. And so it can really, really affect a relationship. But I also think that it can have a positive impact on relationships because when there are times when I really, really need support, I have no option but to be open and honest with my relationship partner, and it lets them in a little bit closer than perhaps they would otherwise. Now, I'm really lucky and fortunate to be in a position right now where I have an extremely supportive partner who helps me in every way that she can, um, but it's a huge learning curve, you know, it's, it's massive, and we're both still on that journey of learning exactly how can I get help. So that's relationships. Now, last bit I'll talk about is self-image and self-worth, which I said I'll talk about. Now, as we know, Ellis Danlos syndrome causes us to have a lack of collagen in our body. Collagen is what keeps us nice and elastic, keeps our skin nice and tight. This is why ladies put collagen on their fists. Now, being someone who was a larger teenager, I have a lot of excess skin on my body. And I can tell you, because I've been there, doesn't matter how skinny I am, doesn't matter if I'm six stone, I still have a lot of excess skin. And that can really affect my self-worth and my body image. Because I look at other people and I think, how is it fair that I can work so hard and be so healthy and do all the right things and have the right balance, yet I still have all this saggy skin. Um, I have one place in particular that I'm really triggered by and it's a, a big bit of loose skin on my tummy. Um, <laughs> over time I've come to name it, I call it my snacks, because that's where my snacks go. And I find that helps because rather than looking at it and thinking, oh I really hate this, 
I look at it and I think, oh, that's my little snacks. I love it. Leave my little snack pouch. Um, but it can be really hard. Uh, the other way it affects your self-worth and self-image is unreliability of your own body. Imagine how hard it is to have a good relationship with yourself if I can't even trust myself to poo when I want to poo. How can I trust this body if sometimes every single part of it hurts and other days it doesn't and there seems to be absolutely <laughs> no correlation between good and bad days and, and when it happens. That can cause really, really bad sort of relationships with yourself. You know, anyone going through that is going to have a bit of negative self-talk and it's really hard to combat. But what I have tried to figure over the last few years is replacing those horrible words with lovely words. You know, sometimes I look at my legs and I think, why are you in so much pain? Why do you hurt all the time? I replace that with, love you legs. Love these legs. Yep, love these legs. As I say, my snacks, love my snacks. Um, and I look at myself now and say, hey girl, you're running five million steps to help people with this condition. Not a lot of people in the world could do that. So there you go. Give yourself a high five. How are you?